Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Monopolis part nine. Oh my gosh, we've been hitting this thing hard. And if you're tuning into this and you see this table and you're gonna continue watching, I am so proud of you. Because I understand if you see a table like that after some of the other videos, you're like screaming and running for the hills. But hopefully not. Hopefully that you continue to kind of try to understand this thing. Because I think there's a lot of depth of understanding that we get if we get this thing down. So I'm gonna go a little bit fast, because we've done this before, okay? I'm really trying to show you something about the MR curve. This video is about price ceilings, okay? And price ceilings do something very interesting to the MR curve, okay? So P and QD is demand, QD and MR is the MR curve. I've got kind of a situation, these two columns. I'm gonna do no price discrimination, no ceiling either. And then I'm going to do a price ceiling. I'm going to try to go fast because we've kind of done this type of stuff before. I'm going to say, hey, at a price of 11, nobody's buying it. The total revenue is going to be zero. The MR pretty much not even applicable right now because we're not going from uh, one output uh, amount to another. Okay, We're just starting at an output of zero. Now, we lower the price to 10. How many are going to buy it? One's going to buy it. Total revenue is going to be 10. What's our marginal revenue? Well, zero to 10 is 10. Marginal revenue is 10. At that first unit of output, price is 10, MR is 10, MR and demand are on the same line. However, to sell another good, we lower the price to nine. Now we can sell two goods. There's no price discrimination, so simply $9 times two is 18. The difference between 10 and 18 is eight, and we see at a quantity of two, price of nine, MR is no longer the same, okay? So at this quantity of two, the demand curve and the MR curve, not in the same place. Let's just finish this off really quick. We lower the price to three. I mean, sorry, lower the price to eight. We can get three people buying it. Hey, that's a total revenue of 24. That's an MR of six. Lower it to seven. You get four people buying it. Seven times four is 28. MR of four. Lower the price to seven. We get five people buying it. Total revenue of 30. MR 28 to 30 is two, lower the price to five, we get six people to buy it, still a total revenue of 30, the MR is zero. Okay, we've seen that, and we should be able to look at any of these output after one, any output after one, so two, three, four, five, six, and you'll see the value here, not the same there. Value here, not the same there. In fact, you can kind of see that the MR is underneath the demand curve. Price ceiling though. So we intervene, we come in with a price ceiling. The government comes in with a price ceiling. And I've already shown you where the price ceiling is gonna be. Price ceiling of $7, okay? So they wanna sell one good. They would love the price, they're only gonna sell one good, $10, but they can't because there's a price ceiling, a price maximum of $7. So they're gonna to have to charge what? $7 for that first one because they can't charge any more. So the total revenue is going to be $7. Oh, by the way, these were always dollar signs there. That's a dollar sign. That's a dollar sign. There's dollar signs all over the place, okay? But anyhow, total revenue of seven because we sold it at a price of seven. Total revenue, of course, if we made zero, the total revenue would have been zero. So the marginal revenue, when we sell that first one, zero to seven is $7. Now we want to sell a second unit. We would love to price it at nine, but we can't. There's a price ceiling. The max price is seven. The most we can sell for is seven. So if we sell two, we're going to sell them both at $7. Our total revenue, 14. Marginal revenue, seven again. We want to sell another product. We want to sell a third product. We would love to price it at eight. We can't. There's a price ceiling. We got to price it at seven. Seven times three, because that's the price, right? Seven times the quantity. Three gives us 21, gives us an MR of seven again. We want to sell the fourth good. We Guess what we're going to price it at? Seven. Actually, we'd have to price it at seven anyhow, with or without the price ceiling, okay? Sell the fourth good, price it at seven. Now we're up to 28 for total revenue. MR, seven again. Look at the MR curve, something very interesting. It's certainly not the demand curve, and it's certainly not the old MR curve. It's something totally different, okay? But I want to keep going, because I want to go for two more, because that's where the real payoff is. So now, we want to sell five goods. 
we got to lower the price to six. Can we lower the price to six? Yes, we can. This is a price ceiling. This is not a price floor. It's a price ceiling. We can lower the price to six. Now, we're still assuming no price discrimination. Still assuming no price discrimination. So if we lower that price to six, we're going to have to sell uh, to every single consumer the price at six dollars. Okay, the good at a price of six dollars, right? So six times five is 30. MR, 28 to 30 is 2. Very interesting. Output of 5. MR of 2 pre-price ceiling. Output of 5. MR of 2 with price ceiling of $7. Let's go just one more past that, okay? We want to sell the 6 good. We're going to lower it to 5. We definitely can lower it to 5. We're going to sell it to everybody at 5. Guess what? 5 times 6. $30. What's the MR? Zero. Look at that takeaway. Two, two. Output of six, zero, zero. So MR was certainly not the same when the price ceiling was binding. But once the price ceiling is no longer binding, we become the old MR curve. Let's take a look at this graphically. If you're still with us on this video, I am so impressed and it's such a good thing because you're going to understand this so deeply and it's going to help you out because these are the really hard questions, okay? So here we go. I've got a monopolist. Just going to draw a demand curve, demand market. No price discrimination, no ceiling. Hey, MR is breaking away at twice the slope. However, let's do a price ceiling. Put a price ceiling of $7. So that's my price ceiling. What does that mean? Well, at a $7 price ceiling, my MR is $7. The price ceiling is the MR curve. So there, all the way to the demand curve is the MR curve. So the MR curve is no longer what it was. The MR curve, once the ceiling is put in place, is now that red line. It's the price ceiling, which should make common sense to us. Think about this. What is MR? The additional revenue we get when we sell one more good. Well, what's the additional revenue that we're going to get when we sell one more good when we're just sell, starting to sell a few goods? It's the price ceiling. So the price ceiling is the MR line. But once we get to here and we want to sell another good, what are we going to have to do? Lower the price, which is perfectly okay. Because once again, price ceiling is a price maximum. We can lower the price. We lower the price, okay? And at that point, when we begin to lower the price, the MR was the ceiling. What's it going to do? It's going to drop down to the old, that should be a vertical line, to the old MR line. Seven to two. Notice, four and seven. The MR lines were not the same. But as soon as we get to $6, as soon as we try to sell one more good, lowering it to $6, at $6, our output is five. At an output of five, the MRs are back the same again. There we go, MR ceiling. So, MR, MR. When a ceiling is put in place, the ceiling itself becomes the MR curve to the demand curve. Once you hit the demand curve, drop down to the old MR curve, and now you're on the old MR curve. This red line, is the new MR curve once the ceiling is put in. Pre-ceiling, MR, just like we always draw it, right? MR, just like we always draw it. Post-ceiling, MR. If you followed all that, fantastic, because that's some of the hardest problems you're ever gonna get in theory of the firm, okay, for a 101 economics class. You got that, you're a long way from, and you're a long way towards, you've gone a long way towards getting yourself an A in the class. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.